guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking everything protein. It may surprise you actually how much protein you need to maximize your muscle gains. So let's hop right into it. Okay, so what is protein? Protein is actually found in every cell in your body. Protein is made up of a chain of amino acids that make up your bone, your hair, your muscle. To build muscle, we need something called muscle protein synthesis to occur. So if you can think of a muscle as a wall and each brick is an amino acid, we want each amino acid brick to be added to the wall leading to muscle. Now, there's something called muscle protein breakdown, which is actually the removing of the bricks. So in order for muscle protein synthesis to occur, we need that to be higher than the muscle protein breakdown in order to build muscle. As you can see, this is crucial in, when you're training regularly to get enough protein to optimize your muscle building process. So now, how much protein do you actually need to maximize your results in the gym? According to the Dietary Reference Intake Report, for people that live sedentary lives, the average adult and recommendation is about 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. So for a 200 pound guy, um, the grams of protein would be 72 grams. For a woman that weighs 130 pounds, say a day, it would be 47 grams of protein for the sedentary woman. So I know what you guys are all thinking, that's extremely low, and these are sedentary people. So they don't have a lot of lean mass to begin with, and that is just to maintain that lean mass, that, those low numbers. So getting into how much protein intake is a little tricky. It varies on your age, height, gender, um, amount of lean mass you have, and your activity levels. So it's not so black and white, so bear with me as I try to explain what would be best for you. And everyone has different goals. So if you're trying to build muscle or lose fat or potentially just body recomposition, which is just slowly turning fat into muscle, everyone has different goals, right? So that's going to be changing the protein intake requirements. It is common to see most websites and videos recommend one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, this is where I think this is just too generalized. So you take a 300 pound guy and you tell me one gram per pound of body weight. That's 300 grams of protein. That's unrealistic and definitely not needed and too much protein um, is not necessarily beneficial but it's not necessarily harmful either. So to be able to calculate your protein intake correctly, you're gonna have to adjust for lean mass. So the amount of mass on your body that is not fat. So now you're wondering how do I actually find what my lean body mass is. So to do this you can use uh, a body composition scanner using uh, impedance which sends an electrical current up and down your body and slows down or speeds up depending how much muscle and body fat you have or I recommend using body fat calipers um, to determine your body fat percentage. So say that your body fat percentage is at 20%. You're going to take 200 pounds times 0.2 which equals 40 pounds of fat. So your lean body mass is 160 pounds. So now getting into how many grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. So a lot of nutritionists and experts recommend one gram per pound of lean body mass. So this is where I sway from this um, conclusion a little bit. So one gram per pound of lean body mass, I think is maximizing protein synthesis for most people. But for people that are at leaner um, body fat percentages and that are highly active, I think can benefit from the higher end of the protein spectrum. So 1.0 grams of protein per lean pound of body mass to 1.6 grams. So depending on what body fat percentage you are and your goals and what current situation, I think the protein will vary from 1.0 grams per pound of lean body mass to about the higher end, 1.6 grams per pound of lean body mass for people with a lower body fat percentage and for those who weight train regularly. Next, I'm gonna show you a study by Eric Helms on athletes in a calorie restricted state and how much protein can affect um, lean body mass and body fat mass. So the study in 2014 suggests that having a higher protein intake when trying to cut down in body fat. They took 13 groups of athletes over a six month period. While in different restricted calorie diets, AKA calorie deficits, while doing regular weight training but switched up how much protein per day each group of athletes was consuming. Body fat decreased around 0.5% to 6.6% in all study groups, but fat-free mass 
lean mass or muscle, the muscle that we want to keep drop 0 0.66 to 6 pounds in 9 of the 13 groups. 6 groups gained or lost little amounts of fat free mass, lean muscle, which is what we want to keep in a calorie restriction and we were trying to lose fat. So just wait, out of these 6 groups we're still among the highest in body fat percentage of the study due to they were in the lowest calorie restriction among all the groups. So they were restricting the least amount of calories. There was one group that was not high in body fat percentage that underwent a higher calorie restriction that consumed the highest protein intake between all the groups at about 1.4 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. So you can see, especially in a calorie restricted state, there is maybe a potential benefit for going higher on that protein scale. So again, for those of you that are new to uh, body fat loss or muscle gain, the goal when a calorie deficit is to retain the muscle. So it is really hard to keep all your muscle in a calorie deficit. So that's why it's better to do it at a slower pace. But in this study, they achieved uh, the results at a faster pace and they wanted to see how much muscle can be maintained. And in that group, the most muscle was maintained while losing the most amount of body fat leading me to believe that there is a greater upside potentially on that higher protein uh, spectrum to that 1.6 grams per pound of lean body mass. So the main takeaway here is that there potentially could be a greater upside for a higher protein intake, especially in a calorie restricted state. And if there's no potential or harmful um, disadvantages for going higher on the protein scale, um, why not try it and potentially maximize the gains? So I want to get into the other benefits of protein, especially for weight loss. Um, protein has a high thermic effect. So a high thermic effect means it actually takes your body twice as many calories to burn compared to carbs and fats. This can lead to greater weight loss over time. It also helps with satiety and keeping hunger levels down. And you guys are probably wondering, can you go too high in the protein intake? Um, you may have heard of potential kidney damage. The thing that with uh, that study is that that was done with people with a kidney disease already that increased their protein intake and it was potentially harmful. We can get into maximizing protein intake for muscle gain. First off, I think this is crucial for people to know how much muscle to expect to gain in a month or even a year. 0 0.5 to 1.5 pounds of muscle per month is the realistic time frame. Yes, you will not look like the rock in one month of regular resistance training, unfortunately. So when trying to add weight, the scale actually doesn't have to move, move up at all. Eating in a maintenance calories or a slight surplus of calories anywhere from 200 to 500 calories with a high protein diet around that 1.0 to 1.6 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass will maximize muscle gain while keeping fat mass gain down while it'll typically sway to the lower end when in maintenance or a slight bulking phase, meaning when I'm slightly trying to gain muscle with decreasing the amount of fat I'm gaining. Now you're probably wondering, how do I get all that protein in? Um, the easiest way I found is to start slow. So whatever protein intake you're taking now, start gradually increasing that week by week. I find the best way to do this is to space out the protein as much as you can throughout the day. This way you're not gonna feel stuffed. A couple other tips here, preparing your protein sources. So on Sundays, just get that meat prepared or whatever protein intake if you're a vegetarian, um, the different like tofu and stuff like that. But preparing for the week is gonna be key. You're not always gonna have time. Have those snacks available, have the smoothies available. Make it easy for yourself. Another, another tip, always try and eat your protein before your carbs and fats because that way you're going to at least get your protein in before you move into the carbs and fats and that's the main thing we want to look after, right? So guys, just a quick review. So remember when you're trying to find uh, how much protein you should be having per pound of body weight, go into the lean mass. That's going to give you a more um, accurate answer to how much protein you should be intaking. And remember that Depending on what state, if you're in a calorie deficit or maintaining your weight or trying to gain a little bit of muscle, your protein intake may vary. Um, it does for me. Um, I change periodically depending on what I'm trying to do. Just remember that protein is always going to help in weight loss for the most part. It's going to help you feel more satisfied. It's going to decrease those junk food cravings, right? So 
always maybe trying on the higher end, try on the higher end, see what happens, right? Um, if you're not seeing any more benefits, um, it can't be really harmful. So what's the risk in trying? Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully that helped figure out your protein intake a little bit, but please like and subscribe and please leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions, but that's all for now. We'll see you next time or next week for the next video.